Yes, indeed. The mind can be divine power. The mind is the key. Consciousness is the proper use of the mind. Welcome, everyone, this afternoon to another edition of the Light 08 Radio Experience. We're still looking for a name to call the new programming, so I want you to, if you have some ideas, shoot me a, shoot me a suggestion. Either go up to the Facebook page for Light 08 Radio or inbox me at Light 08 radio at gmail.com okay uh fully interactive your thoughts your ideas they count here um glad to be here tony quaid light as i'm known in some circles obviously got a special guest today uh, a very very special guest uh reverend dr phil valentine no stranger to the light Eight radio experience those who are studying uh living and experiencing higher level consciousness uh, Reverend Dr. Phil Valentine um, has uh, been another one of those brothers, another one of those people uh, who has taught many, who has uh, made many of us, many of we, more aware, awake and aware with his teachings, his, his uh, presentation of things, both esoteric as well as cultural. Um, he's actually... Uh, has an event coming up in New York uh, next month, I believe. And uh, I, I asked him, I said, well, you know, what can I do to help you get the word out? He hasn't been in New York for some time. So he said he would like to come on and spend a little time with us today and tell us about his return to New York. Uh, he is going to be working with King Simon. Those of you in the New York area know uh, King Simon, another a devoted one uh, who is instrumental in putting on a lot of the cultural conscious raising events in the New York area. Uh, King Simon was going to join us today. I spoke to him earlier, and he has actually uh, Dick Gregg, uh, good brother, uh, one of the another master teacher. You see, it's time. Okay, Dick Gregory will be um, uh, the guest of King Simon in the event uh, coming up this weekend. Um, and uh, he's actually, King Simon is out doing some promoting for that. So if you are in the New York area, be sure and uh, check that out because Dick Gregory, anytime he has something to say, it's worth listening to. Uh, I want to thank those of you who are joining us. Uh, if you're calling in, the number, the call-in number is 347-826-9123. I know in this era of wireless communication and smartphones, some of you are on the phone with us. And there's already uh, people in the in the room ready to talk to uh, Reverend Dr. Phil. He will be on momentarily. Just got a couple of quick announcements to make, and then we're going to get right into it. First of all, today's program is brought to you in part by a company called O3 Infusions. That's the letter O, the number three, Infusions, I-N-F-U-S-I-O-N-S, O3Infusions.com. Uh, oxygen therapy, uh, 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 skin and body oil uh, made from activated, oxygenated um, olive oil. Uh, but it does everything. I mean, if you have dry skin, uh, acne, psoriasis, eczema, insect bites, uh, muscle aches, wrinkles, bed sores, and much, much more, uh, diaper rash if you have babies, this stuff is incredible. A uh, young lady was actually uh, smashed her face in a uh, car auto accident and started using it. And there's a picture of her before and after on the site. So if you have any need for a, a good, healthy, wholesome, holistic um, skin uh, treatment, skin therapy, uh, oil, skin oil, uh, take a look at the O3 Infusion Solution. O3 Infusions, if it wasn't science, it would be magic. And also by Universal Love Jewelry. Universal Love Jewelry, um, jewelry uh, made by some good, a family of jewelers actually, uh, Adams and Kofa and Fahim out of Georgia, uh, universallovejewelry.com. Uh, they've got something for everybody. So if you've got a gift idea coming up, you've got graduations coming up, Mother's Day just passed, maybe you missed the call. Maybe you forgot to take care of mom. You want to get her some nice jewelry, uh, very, very uh, e exquisite, eclectic collection. 
um, something for everybody. Father's Day is coming up as well. So um, take a look at what Universal Love Jewelry has to offer. Everybody loves Universal Love Jewelry. Um, that's about it. We've got um, coming up here. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. I, I, I've got a real pleasant surprise for you for Father's Day. That's the ways off, but it's never too soon to let you know. Um, I've been working with the group Mandrill, and uh, there's some things that I'm going to be doing as far as Mandrill Radio. And um, I will be uh, bringing in uh, psychic, empath, and UFO contactee. Um, Denise Zeradia, uh, she's getting putting some things together, but she's definitely going to be a part of the Light Awake Radio experience, as well as Weeple News, We the People News. I'm going to let you kind of figure that out on your own, but the punchline is something for the people, by the people, delivered to the people. Uh, we're still waiting here for uh, Reverend Dr. Phil Valentine, but I do see there's some people already on the line. So if you call in, just press the number one, and then I'll see that you're in the queue, and we will uh, get you on the air. Uh, let's see here. Right now, I have, um, hmm, okay, let's see. Uh, the last four digits of your area code 646, last four digits, 3603. Welcome to today's program. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Dr. Valentine. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize your area code. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? If I was any better, I would be you, sir. It's a good pleasure to have you come by, and we really appreciate uh, everything that you've done for the planet, uh, Dr. Valentine, as well as the people. And it's so good to have you come in today and spend a little time with us. Thank you. Well, I'll get right to it. Uh, I spoke to you earlier, but first, I want, I want to do something in public. You gave me an idea when we spoke, and um, I mentioned to you something, and it caught you off guard, and it was a compliment, and I, and I meant it in that spirit, and obviously you took it in that spirit, but I said, and I want to share it with the family, I said that you and the people, you were telling me how back in the day, it was you in New York, uh, Dr. Delbert Blair, in Chicago, uh, Bobby Hemet in Atlanta, and then on the West Coast we had uh, uh, Brother um, um, Jamal who was doing front page, and that made up kind of like the four corners of the of the, the metaphysics uh, spiritual community. And then I mentioned to you, I said, you know, you, yourself, uh, Dr. Blair, who I've done some, some programming with, the family knows what we've done with him, uh, Jewel Pulkram, Bobby Hemet, and Peace Be Upon His Spirit, uh, Steve Coakley, you guys represented some over a thousand years of, of information brought back to us to take it forward. And you said, wait a minute, brother, stop. <laughs> I never looked at it that way. So I'd like you to kind of respond, you know, to, to tell the family what it means to have those of you who has given us this information and continue to give us this information while we are talking about your return to New York to do a uh, uh, lecture. What does it mean to, to, to have this information alive, living relative information, especially at this particular time? Well, uh, that you put it that way, the, the upward, sur the upsurgence of consciousness going through almost a biorhythmic uh, pulse, up and down, up and down. Uh, we are on an upsurge <clears throat> at this moment, and there seems to be kind of parallel uh, energy that tries to drag it down. But the more it's forced, or the more pressure is put upon it, the stronger it gets. And what we represent, the names that you've called, uh, it struck me that essentially what we just represent is a relay race where you pass the baton, torches passed. And some of us are tasked to be more open and public. Others who are unsung and are doing the same kind of work but do not or were not actually tasked to go out into the public and become known to the public uh, their work is just as relevant. Those people who essentially work behind the scenes uh, with us who essentially give them the credibility because in their circle sometimes the people who do not get the kind of notoriety that the names you've called out get, 
sometimes don't get the legitimacy or at least give, get the, uh, the validity of validating from their community. So I myself have constantly striven or strived to validate those people who are unsung. And like what you were speaking about, it kind of caught me off guard when you said a thousand years. That's, that's pretty powerful because now it put into perspective what it is that we seem to be doing in our own little corners and what we represent and what we are uh, attempting to maintain. Uh, it's very difficult when, you know, the powers that be at the moment are doing their best to suppress the consciousness of the people and the actions that consciousness takes through the people uh, is, is, is being suppressed. So what we represent simply is uh, a reminder to those returning souls of what their tasks are and whether or not they've chosen in this life to take up the gauntlet and to take it and move it forward, fight whatever battles are necessary to maintain the flow uh, of that kind of energy that will eventually bring peace back to the planet or peace from within instead of peace from without because no path is going to forge peace from without, especially those who believe that there should be hierarchical uh, thoughts and hierarchical mindsets uh, that, you know, that can actually uh, place humans into categories uh, of relevance. And I'm not saying I'm condoning socialism or any of these isms, like Bob Marley says, the ism schisms, we just keep creating isms, and then by creating isms, we create schisms. And so what happens is there are people who believe that they can uh, create and modulate human behavior by calling it a specific thing like socialism and communism. Mm. I realize that if you do not get to the point where people from within are comfortable, because when you feed someone, give them a sense of pride, self-worth, and dignity, there's no need for war. No one wants to fight during when, when someone is doing that or, or allowing someone to be that. Uh, but today we have a few people who believe that they're superior uh, and that they have a right to dictate to people who they believe to be less superior. And uh, we are essentially those people that remind those people who have been told they're less superior that, no, it's an illusion. It's time for you to get study who you really are. Interesting. And, you know, uh, Dr. Valentine, you said so much, and I, I'm – I'm going to go back down memory lane a little bit to something that I've heard you speak on many times coming into this time that we're in, and, and especially in light of what you just said. One time you made us, you said, and I, I'm going to quote you, I remember, because I, I set up straight. You said, do you know something, family? I'm starting to think that even thoughts are not what we've been told they are, that a thought is actually outside the realm of this higher consciousness. And I went, I remember when you said that you had come to LA, this was several years ago. And I'm putting this in context to you returning to New York after being gone for some years. I had a chance to talk to you on a couple of occasions through the years about that very thing. And I started to reflect and I said, you know, sometimes a thought is not, doesn't originate from me. It may come from somewhere else, a good or bad, but it may come from somewhere else. And it's obvious to me that today more than ever, mind control, that is the controlling of our thoughts. Someone obviously knows that what you said is more true perhaps than any of us would realize. What is it about the way we think that is forming some of this craziness and I'm seeing a rise of the sociopath in the midst of all of this. How How is it that mind control is kind of t taking a step in a certain direction, you mentioned relay racing. You guys stay right along with it. But how is it that that thought is being used on us, our very thoughts, in your observation? That's a good question. Um, in fact, the premise of my lecture on Father's Day, because there are two, uh, two distinct uh, programs for that weekend. The Saturday will be a private on the Sunday. I will be dealing with the algorithms of, uh, consciousness control and mind control. And there is an algorithmic process to structuring 
the, 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 the tapestry of mind control because it's become so sophisticated mm -hmm. that it's no longer necessary for you to, to uh, you know, upload any kind of chips into one. Uh, the chips would be mostly for the animal, the ones they consider to be animals, the ones that, you know, they don't they essentially wish to just follow, you know, like they would tag a whale or they would tag okay. uh, something in the wild. That's what they wish to do with us. Uh, there are other more sophisticated methods that they've developed very highly uh, infused with the genetics and DNA. And I said something back in 2000 at one of the gatherings of the Masters with my brother Kevin, Kevin Jackson. Yes, uh, good brother. Good brother. Good brother. Good. Yes. And uh, he's in the likeness, like, he's in the likeness of Brother King Simon, but only from the south, southern uh, jurisdiction, for want of a better term. But he and I put together something called the Gathering of the Masters, which was actually the resuscitation of the Gathering of the Masters that was up in the north. Uh, he asked me to use the name so that we could re rekindle it. And at that lecture, I spoke about something called nanogenetic mind control. Now, at the time, there were no, uh, well, at least it wasn't known, that there were more sophisticated methods for mind control being developed based upon there being an organic energy, uh, organic slash synthetic fusion uh, of, of, of materials that would lead to the controlling of human thought and behavior. And in nanogenetic mind control, I spoke about the fact that the manipulation of our food, our water, and our air will go far into uh, into into the, uh, the realms of of how human behavior will be controlled. And now we find that with the manipulation of the genetics of the food, I spoke about the fact that eating is a form of communication between you and nature, and that nature as she is going through her consciousness development, as she is traversing space and picking up all kinds of data from the dark matter and dark energy envelope that surrounds what we call or think of as empty space, information is constantly being filtered through the atmospheres of our planet into the very solid parts that we call the elements, the fire, air, water, and earth, which constitutes the W-O-R-D of God. So we're constantly in communication with the greater scope of what we call God consciousness. And the earth is picking that up first and firsthand. And how she translates that to her children or to those who are sharing this life envelope with her is through the food chain. Mm. The food essentially has a DNA imprint of the earth's consciousness, and she knows what the rest of the cosmos is actually thinking and doing. So the greater micro, uh, macrocosmic mind is actually filtered through and acts through the microcosmic mind of the earth. And through her, through the soil, through the four elements and their interactions with one another, we get the information as it's encoded in the food supply, especially in the fruits, organic fruits wow. and wow. vegetables. So what they needed to do was to destroy that communication link that we had with nature. And that's why you keep seeing what Monsanto keeps doing with the seeds, destroying and taking the seeds out of the food because the seed dictates what that is. And you, you begin to molecularly and genetically change the food so when someone consumes it, by nature, when you begin to digest your food, the DNA of the fruit is interfacing with your DNA and giving your DNA instructions. So to get someone to become a better slave without having to tackle them the way they do their lions and trap them or go after them with the whale and shoot them with harpoons, you simply restructure the genetics of the food supply. You know, it's starting to make sense. I, I, I'm starting to see. I would, I would ask, and not necessarily me. Of course, I'm asking, but I'm saying I, as, as anyone would ask, and you've asked the same question. Why on earth would anyone poison the food? And then it starts to, you start to see a different picture 
of of the game plan. So if I'm understanding what you're saying, Dr. Valentine, a combination of this, you know, soulless, digital, uh, um, out of control uh, torpedo that they've got us all attached to with some of this technology, okay, a combination of that, terraforming the planet, but most importantly, changing the very structure of the food that is speaking to us, to the cosmos, and to the planet. Is that where we are? So they're using this food, this, this genetically modified food to change our way of thinking or the way we process information naturally? I, I want to make sure I'm, yeah. I'm understanding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah, that's one of the vectors. It's just one. I just chose the food supply of fruits, vegetables, and so forth in your meat. There are no... It's now become just common knowledge what they're doing to the food supply. Yeah. And what it was back then, it was not common knowledge back in 1998, 97, 95, and through 2000 when we were speaking about them getting ready to manipulate the food supply so that they can manipulate consciousness. What mm. you have to understand is that, that consciousness is. It is not something that you is distinct or outside of you. So manipulating, yes. so manipulating that which constitutes the end result of consciousness from its uh, fundamental levels, like on the DNA, molecular, atomic levels, uh, that, that restructuring of the atomic, genetic, molecular structure of food also uh, dovetails into what is happening to you because you and the food are one. Whatever happens to your body, whatever, when you put that food into your system, that's what the body is going to process, and you are training, teaching, and communicating with yourselves on that subcellular level, genetic DNA, molecular, atomic level. You are communicating with them once your body now takes that uh, encased or what we call quantumized format of information that we call a fruit, and it is it is a format. Essentially, okay. it is a programming and a format. And of course, in movies like The Matrix and so forth, uh, it's easier to talk to the digital generation in these in this linguistic. So they understand okay. it in this in this way. So I I've broken it down back then so that the children today would be able to understand it. So what we have now is a very sophisticated way of dumbing down the people by causing their genetics to essentially dumb down or to, uh, to create a ceiling because all life forms are towards the development of a greater level of consciousness while they're in the shell that they've chosen. If you're doing something to create a ceiling to that person's ability to get out of the present envelope of their consciousness, then you are purposefully impeding the forward momentum that the creator always puts into its creations, and that is to become ever more conscious of itself. Mm. Now, is it possible, it is, like a lot of people have shifted their diet to a vegetarian or a vegan diet. Um, obviously, we are all bearing witness to the sinister, as I call it. They they made, they, they did a lot of, a, couple, a few little funny move in the round moves on us all um now they obviously anticipated that there would be a rising in the consciousness from at the dna level of the people on the planet they knew that or if they didn't know it they suspected it because they did a lot of things to kind of block some of that progress you mentioned earlier the, for the people who have taken to a vegetarian a vegan diet and a lifestyle it seems to me that the sinister took that into account too so as I understand it, they have started to splice the DNA of some of the, the, the plant food that we take in. So I guess the question I would ask you is to speak on that. And then how is the diet that we, what type of diet would we take? How, what is our antidote, a, antidote, something that we can do to offset this at the individual level as well as the collective? Well, the last, now that we've become more conscious, a lot of us are saving our seeds Yes. Um, to be able to, to uh, um, you know, to grow our own food, uh, to take on uh, food as, you know, a 
a primary uh, directive to survival. You know, they're not worried about, you know, uh, you know, their money in the bank or any of these things anymore. It, it's unnecessary to worry about anything like that. You know, and um, I would suggest that organic foods, organic vegetables, and if you are a, a consumer of cadavers or a flesh eater, that you do your best to eat um, what you can or to consume what you can uh, that you have grown in your own bag. In other words, if you have cattle, slaughter your cattle or whatever it is. We're not condoning it, but if you are a meat consumer, do not consume the meat that they give you in these supermarkets because okay. none of it can be, can, be, um, can be trusted. Nothing that they're selling in the supermarkets unless you understand how, they, how to counteract what you've eaten from the supermarkets, uh, you're not going to be able to do anything uh, except, uh, you know, conform to the kind of, uh, uh, I guess, consciousness paralyzing and mutating substances that they're putting into the foods. So your consciousness has to be uh, more, um, um, how do you say, uh, focused on the invisible workings of energy. For instance, I tell my brothers and sisters to become proficient in, in the use of the pendulum. The pendulum, a lot of people say, well, that just seems like it's just scrying or, um, you know, just using, uh, you know, divining rods and so forth. But that's not true. You can actually speak to energy if you understood how energy worked and how your mind interfaces with energy and how energy can speak back to you. Energy is conscious of itself as itself. It becomes conscious of itself while you're reading it when you ask it to give you the information that you know is encoded within it so that you can understand it. So if you're asking the energy of a fruit or an apple, for instance, what do you contain and whatever you have in there, is it good for me? You hold it in your left hand. You use your pendulum to ask the question while blanking your mind for any other thoughts, and you watch how that particular pendulum works after you've asked the question. And the question has to be placed in such a way as it's yes or no, because it has to spin it to the left for no, to the right for yes. And you can ask it how, much, how many degrees or units of energy are contained within this apple. If there is anything in there that would impede it, it will only give you a, a low energy of maybe five to 10,000 units. But if it goes up to five to 600,000 units or a million units, you know that that's good for you and that your body will take less energy to digest it than it would if you had something of a lower vibrational frequency. Ah. So there are ways for you to be able to speak to nature, and you can't decide. You know, they say low tech is what's going to rule in high tech. So high tech is the, is, is the United States going into Vietnam, and low tech is these boys getting down in the, the dirt and fighting a guerrilla warfare. So low tech is what you're going to have to do to go back to finding out how to interface with the language that nature does, because that's what they did at a more sophisticated level. They've gone into HARP and all these SCAT, SCART, and all the rest of these other sophisticated ways of manipulating nature. Now you have to know how to do it on a sublime level so that you can counteract those energies or at least recognize them when they're there. So knowing just something as simple and, and mastering something as simple as the, as the pendulum can, can get you uh, the, the area code to the energy frequencies of nature. And you can dial up and find out whether or not the food you're consuming is actually for you or is actually consuming you. How about that? I'm going to take a quick break here and make an announcement about um, King Simon's event coming up this Sunday in New York. And then when we come back on the other side of the break, you're returning to New York, and um, I want you to tell us a little bit about that and some of the changes that you've seen, you know, since the last time you were there and since you resided there. This Sunday, the 19th of May, uh, at the Akbar Hall in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, uh, Dick Gregory and Brother Polite will be there as guests of King Simon. And uh, for information, uh, those of you who are in the New York area, you definitely want to go in there because... These two brothers represent not only the information in, 
and the the consciousness that Dr. Phil is talking about right now, but they also have said for years how to apply it, and as is Dr. Valentine. Uh, the number to call for information is 347-496-1022, 347-496-1022, and 347-600-7066. 347-600-7066. Uh, Dr. Valentine, we're going to take a quick little break here. I always like to put infuse soul music into the discussion because that speaks to the soul, and you have even spoke on that many, many times. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Time has returned to New York. He's been gone for a while, and he, back in the day of the, at the, the golden age, if you would, I don't even know if that's the right thing to call it, of consciousness, when consciousness met with metaphysics, and as a result of that, we made some moves. Some of we made moves, and I, for one, am still applying the information that I uh, received at that time. Dr. Phil is returning to New York. Uh, Brother Valentine, let me ask you something. I, I play I play a lot of old school music. I play jazz. I play some of the new stuff because it's not all bad. I, I need to. That's another thing. We need to stop letting other people tell us what's good and what's bad. But I got to ask you. You've been involved in music thing. As I recall, you were in the music business at one time. So I remember you shared that with us. Why don't they make music like that anymore? The Jacksons were little boys singing those kind of songs, and they still inspire me and you and many of us. And I know your son is actively involved in music. Why is it? What happened that there's no longer that kind of move the people along did it just happen is it it was it deliberate how did we get to where we are where we aren't as far as soul music well soul music has always evolved because whenever we get something we always change it turn it around make it a new rhythm add a few new words new slang we always improve upon ourselves and it's interesting because uh, music has been the outlet for a lot of the frustrations of our people, especially the, uh, it, it became the rallying cry that amped us, energized us to go forward to do what we needed to do uh, in order to, first of all, survive, <clears throat> to keep our spirit alive, to keep our, our attention uh, uh, to the task uh, of, of, of emancipation, fighting, revolution, everything. And... <clears throat> They, they knew that music began becoming more dangerous after uh, the, the way that rhythm began to be dictated by black music. Uh, I don't care what they've done in rock music because all of that is simply something they took and created a kind of uh, a bastard child of rhythm and blues, soul, things of that nature, and... They've kind of taken it, and I mean, with incredible musicianship, of course, but with the soul and the heart of what it is that black people brought to the table, the cultural table, they took it and made it their own and be made it so exclusive that they essentially redlined black people towards a particular category and said that they no longer can go back into the neighborhood that they built. Wow. And I was there. I mean, I had, uh, we were ready to take the next step. Uh, after Earth, Wind, and Fire set the bar beyond anything that people could actually succumb, uh, he, they left wiggle room for different expressions, and we began to express black music and reclaim the kind of driving funk that rock had taken over and claimed to be their own. And black music... Because we have words that move and the soul is driven into everything that we touch, we talk about, and so forth, uh, those in power knew that the words and the music of black people were the driving force behind their revolutionary actions and mindsets and so forth. So they had to destroy, they had to cripple that communicative set, that communicative estuary, that, that font of supportive energy that came from our music. And what happened, they began to the destruction at the point where I remember where we were at Epic Records, and they began telling us that uh, white America, middle America, is not ready for black people playing rock. 
Well, there was a good friend of ours at that time, a very good friend who used to come to our commercial uh, our rehearsals, uh, who eventually went on and just completely destroyed that myth. Uh, a group called Living Color, a good friend yes, of sir. mine, Vernon Reed. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, stomped through that, of course, with the help of Jagger. And what happened was he took that, but again, it did not open the door to others that they would give that kind of um, energy to. Okay, so now what they did was after Earth, Wind, and Fire began telling you about the serpentine fire, about keeping your head to the sky, about all of the, you know, I mean, the, the music is just the epitome of what it is black music became. It, that was the, that was the uh, capstone to the pyramid, was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's at least my own, you know, my own assessment of it. And what happened after that was they began to become afraid because when Earth, Wind, and Fire opened the door to super consciousness and to give the black people in, in America and around the world a template for their own genetic memory by on their albums with their pyramids, with, with the faces of ancient yes. Genesis, yes. that began, that was, okay, hold on now, that's, that's a little bit too much information too much association, too much association with things we didn't want them to know about. It was after that that music began to come, uh, that, a, that a, a distinct campaign to destroy black music at the source where the children would inherit it. I remember in my time, you could walk down the neighborhood and go to the pawn shops and see instruments hanging in the window, and you would then kind of salivate and say, I want to be able to play that, I'm going to want to do that, and so forth. Music was taken out of the schools so that the children weren't, uh, the, the funding for music programs for children were taken out of the school. So there was no kind of culture, uh, cultural exchange or cultural interface and then jazz was taken off and shipped out, and it came back. Uh, I remember the destruction of that type of funk jazz that yep. Sandy turned yes. And That's then right. they took that right. to Europe. The white boys began playing that. It came back as cool jazz. As so jazz. They, began, they call it as yeah. jazz. Isn't that something? Right. And so now they destroyed it. And what happened was, since the young people did not have, or they were not playing our music anymore, I remember KISS 95 or 99 FM or 97 FM came up, and they came up one time, I believe it was back in the 90s, uh, that they, they just crashed in with this old school. They were playing Motown, everything, and they had the greatest listenership on the planet because of that. So they took the test. They began to take the pulse and know what people wanted and needed and so they took that off and left the children without nothing for them to actually uh, uh, carry on with, to be seated with. That's when, quote, unquote, hip hop took the turntable and made that into an instrument. And so we began to see now that the kids said, okay, well, if you're taking the music from us and we don't have the next progression, let's do this. So with that hybrid the people in the music business said, okay, we have a hybrid that we can control. We can give them samples. We can change the laws, the mm. copyright laws, so that they could go ahead and tap into their, 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 their father's music and their uncle's music and not have to pay them. We will raise that particular kind of mentality. We'll go there and we'll raise that as the new standard for music. So what they did was create a serious ceiling so that the creativity that came from a child learning how to master a musician, master a, a musical instrument, which takes a kind of concentration to do, to master instruments so that you could make the instrument your spirit catcher, because they knew that the instrument was a form of spirit catcher. Yeah. So they took that from the children, and they just gave them the sound for them to play with. Then they took the 6-8 sound out of music and gave them the flat 4-4, four, four where the drum entrained the heart. The heart is on a 6-8 measure. The, the drums they gave was a 4-4, four, four, which destabilized the heart, which is why our children at that time when rap was going into its serious violent stage was on a 4-4, four, four, which turned it, made the children heartless at that particular time. Uh. Into the thug. So it was very well done. I mean, those who did that planned for the destruction of our, young, our youth mentally, and, and spiritually, and then 
because they knew that there would be a surplus based upon that new war that they were bringing in, the crack and the, and the new heroin and all the rest of the thing, they then began building jails and began using rap as a conduit for getting out the violence, making violence, bringing the guns in, bringing the drugs so that they could fill the jails and make the prison system, the prison industrial complex, the new outlet for their way of making a buck. And that's exactly what they did. But now there's a resurgence. Yeah, I, I get a chance to talk to a lot of some of the old school artists, and I get a chance to talk to some of the the new jacks. And um, it's definitely just like the spirit sent. I, I've always said this, and I, I, I've, other people that are in the music business have shared this with me. Tupac was supposed to be the Marvin Gaye of the hip hop era. Mm-hmm. A lot of things happened. He 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 did what he was supposed to do, but he got pulled into some things. And we'll address that one day. Maybe I'll get you back to talk about that. I, I, I there's some things that happened to him that I know about that aren't really public. But suffice it to say, they moved really fast to give you Ja Rule and who was the other Usher. They Mob moved deep. quickly. Yes, more Mob, yeah. They gave you a lot of a lot of artificial fillers, and I've always said that Biggie Smalls was just a, a, a diversion. These people don't mind killing people to make it look mm -hmm. like one thing when they're actually another, but they it was systematic. And then as soon as the thing took a turn for the worse, all of a sudden Ja Rule was gone. He didn't have a career. You can't find yeah. his T-shirts in the pawn shop at a swap meet now. So it's interesting yeah. how it happened. Um, you're going back to New York. And um, that's a that's a uh, not necessarily the chickens coming home to roost. I like to liken it as to the falcon returning home to the mountain because that's where we we that got to know you uh, publicly outside of New York. That's where you were when I first became aware of you some twenty years ago. And obviously, you're talking about hip hop and music, and there was a a movement. Hip hop started there. The the, the current version of hip hop can find from there. What have you seen as far as, well, first of all, before I go, um, if you have a question for Dr. Valentine, you want to talk to him, feel free to call in, ask a question, press 1, so that we will know that you have a question for him because uh, he's here uh, spending a little time with us, but he's here for you, not for me. 347-826-9123 and just press 1, and I'll see you in the queue and you have your question. Or if you have... Um, <coughs> you want to um, put a question in the chat room, feel free to type your question. We'll get to as many as we can with the few minutes we have left. But, Brother Valentine, you're going home. Talk to us about what that means to you and, and, and how that's going to be different, how it's going to be the same, and how it's going to be new. Well, I would want it to be new. It's going to be me returning back to, I guess, my, my cradle, the scene of the nativity, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, New York forged me. It also, you know, was my mother and father. It was my concrete mother and concrete father. And it, it gave me a chance uh, to get to know my West Indian roots because in Brooklyn, that is, you know, the... Uh, the mecca of, you know, all West Indians and diasporic West Indians, I call them. And uh, we, I, you know, just being there amongst my people and just amongst, you know, uh, African peoples from all over the world uh, and starting with something that I liked so much and thanks to a good brother at the time who had a place called the Tree of Life, uh, that was... Mecca for me. Uh, it was responsible, the Tree of Life with Brother Kanye, Bashan McGee. He set up that little, that little temple uh, to self-knowledge, and I was there practically every day uh, buying a book or just sitting down in, the, in, in his uh, basement reading. Uh, that's where I got to meet um, Maurice White. Okay. Uh, who walked through there. And, you know, it, 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 was, a, it was a place a mecca for people, and of course, Charles Rangel tore it down because, uh, you know, he was given orders to make sure that there was too many secrets that were coming out of there. He was bringing too much to light. But that place 
or was uh, that place was my uh, you know I weaned on metaphysics from there all the information and then of course uh, I just uh, absorbed myself in reading I read over three thirty five hundred books uh, within four years five years and I I know I read so much stuff I don't know I, I don't remember I don't remember what I know. Yeah, it just gets in there, and then you know, if somebody can trigger it for you, you can tell them what you know. But yeah. New York is is a place that you don't want to stay too unless you wean there. You don't want to stay too long there. But yeah. when you're there, it 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 is vibrant, it is energized, and it's where you cut your teeth if you really want to test yourself. Because if I mean in New York, we got everything. Everybody, everybody is there. So you can't really uh, fascinate New Yorkers uh, unless you seriously got something to give to them. And I was lucky enough to fascinate the brothers and sisters in my circle with what I knew and what I could bring to the table, and then they helped me cut my teeth by by really hammering me to make sure that I knew what I knew. And if you did not know what you knew and you failed, how oh, they let you know it? So oh, man, you I, make it to New York. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I was just saying, it, the first time I went to New York, man, I, and I, by the time I got to New York, I had already been half, traveled in the world, other countries. I'd been in many, many places in the States, and I still remember, thing, it blew my mind. It, I mean, I grew up in L.A., Hollywood, Hollywood. And there's a lot of stuff out here, you know, major tourist attraction, blah, blah, blah. But I remember when I took me and my friend, we were we had never been to New York. Both of us from Cali and had never been to New York. We were working on a project. And 3 o'clock in the morning, we decided to leave the hotel over in Brooklyn. We're going to take the subway. So we take all the subways, and we get to get off the subway. We're talking to people. And, and it's funny because... People say, well, people in New York are friendly. I don't know if that's true. People in New York, at least in my opinion, don't take no BS. But yeah. there's a there's a vibe, man. I mean, some cops yeah. on horses, I'll never forget it. The sister looked like Sister Soldier. And and we were just driving. And my, my friend Steve was a cameraman. You 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 know him. He's done, I think he's done some stuff with you, Stevie Mac. Well, anyway, we're taking pictures, man, right? And and we see these horses, and she says, and, and we say, hey, you know, we're from California. We're working here. And and this this blew our mind. This this brother and sister on these big old these are the biggest horses I've ever seen, man. And she said, okay, watch this. She reared up that horse. This sister couldn't have been no more taller than four foot eleven. She mm -hmm. reared up this horse, man. We got a picture of. We got down to Madison Square Garden. We got off. This was before they blew up the towers and started the drama. Man, that blew my mind. Man, I've never seen mm -hmm. nothing like that. This is somebody mm -hmm. I've lived in Vegas on New Year's Eve. I mean, I saw people arguing with each other, grappling with each other, and they would just jump right into character and just start talking to you like, hey, how you doing? Da, da, da. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a spirit there that they, that the proverbial they have done everything they can to distort it. Uh, the, the, the black conscience, my best friend, my godchildren, their folks are from New York. It's weird that even when I was in the Air Force, man, I, my best friends, for whatever reason, it was always from New York, black or white. You guys had it going on. And uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be good to have, I'm sure, they're looking forward to having you come back. Well, you know, there's a saying we have that, that summarizes everything that we were trying to say, but there's no words for. They say, only in New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, <laughs> look, man, it was, we, were, we, we thought we had a restaurant row. And so mm -hmm. somebody said, well, where's Restaurant Row? So we're, me and my friend Steve, we're walking, and we walk by a, a pizza place. And this guy, he looked just like something out of a mob movie, The Godfather. Mm -hmm. He looked past the crowd. Me and my, my buddy were standing uh, on the sidewalk, and he said, hey, you two, come over here. Just like that. And we did. <laughs> I mean, we did, man. He mm -hmm. said, you guys aren't from here, are you? He, we had, he, how could he know? And everybody, yeah. there was a crowd there about four in the morning. He said, you guys, I want you to try some." He gave us a slice of New York pizza, man. Brother, I've never, I mean, you know, and I, I, I haven't eaten pizza in a bazillion years. But if I, if you drop me off right back down there right now, yeah. I could tell you where that spot is. And he just looked yeah. at me. He said, you guys never had nothing like that, have you? He said, no, we haven't. <laughs> Isn't that like it? Like I said, New York is nothing like New York. You go anywhere. 
the village. You can go downtown, uptown. There's always something in New York. And like Bill Cosby said, there's a nut in every car. There's, New York is entertainment capital above ground and below ground. So you're going to be entertained on the train because you're going to see all kinds of scenes. Like I said, I, brother, I know. I was raised in it. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. But again, I, if you're from New York, the thing is, if you're from New York, you ain't phased. It's like every day. So yeah. whatever you yeah. bring in there, it's got to be something that says, say, oh, that's different. You know, then yeah. you pay attention, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a brother. A brother, he's passed on. He was the one we were working for. He's a cameraman, good brother, man. And he, we went. And me and Steve, we call ourselves. We're gonna go shopping, so we go buy some outfits, man. Right? And we thinking, you know, we, we, we this is fly, man. We it was a, it was a, it was a two piece suit. It had, it was, looked like it was some kind of suede or crushed velvet or something. And he saw now. We, now the guy, he must have known because nobody, nobody would buy. Nobody in New York would buy this. But we bought them. You know, we thought we was styling, man. So when he saw him, he got back to the hotel. He said he called us kid and stopped playing because the suits looked like something, man, out of out yeah. of kid play video, man. But it was it was playing. And I and I <laughs> he said, so who are you who are you two? Kid and stop playing, okay? <laughs> hey man, we got a call on here, man. You want to take some? I can go on and on, but brothers, it's good, and I know that uh, you know you're there's 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 a saying. Well, you can never go home. I would say that a New Yorker is probably you probably don't no. on the planet that can go home. Okay? No, we can't. No, <laughs> uh, we got. We've got a call here for, uh, let's see, 19 area code, 7578 is the last four. You're on the air with Dr. Valentine. Your first name, where are you calling from? Peace, Tony. Peace, Dr. Phil. This is Darius Jones from the Women's oh, Territory, Darius. North Carolina. Hey, man. I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm, a, former, I'm, a, former, I'm a former Zulu myself. I've been following you for the longest, and I know uh, what we got now is not rap or hip-hop. But no. with the music that's coming out now, with the influence of brothers like you and Dr. Delbert Blair and, and Tony, they're pretty much yeah. rapping the things that we're studying now. So that's a major, major influence in the streets. You know, they mm. what, what is for bad to actually turn around and be good for us? Yeah, they call you, yeah the brothers and sisters from what they call God Hop, you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah those brothers. Yeah, those brothers and, yeah, they're making they're making the thing right. They're shifting the consciousness, and they're bringing back hip hop to its place where what it is, what it used to be, and now they're putting the consciousness back. They're putting back the teaching mechanisms that hip hop was supposed to have been doing. It's supposed to have kept the consciousness of the previous movements of black people alive, and that's what the God Hop movement is doing. It's, it's restructuring the words so that they have a positive influence on you instead of a negative influence on you. And I applaud those brothers and sisters, Sarah and all the rest of them, Sister Bundy's Child, who is actually leading the charge on it. I think they're doing an exceptional job. Red and Blue Pill, all of them. And I can Good brothers. Them. Know them. Yeah, they uh, blue. At, every time I'm in Atlanta, uh, that brother, whatever I'm doing, him and his brother uh, support it. They're good cats, and uh, we'll be doing some things with them. Um, uh, Dr. Valentine, uh, Brother Darius, did you have a question? Do you have anything else you wanted to uh, ask Dr. Phil while you're on the air? Uh, why are they messing with Jay-Z as far as going to Cuba? Was it behind a Sata Shakur? Yeah, a lot of times, I, I, uh, it was back in the day, I think I, I, I hit him up on Facebook when that first came out, and I told him, there's no way for Jay-Z or Beyonce to have gotten to Cuba unless they were already given an ambassadorship, an ambassadorship, and, uh, or they were given special permission by Obama because Obama and Jay-Z and them are very close. And uh, they were probably, because of the fact that uh, Jay-Z has given Obama uh, loads of money, uh, in his campaign, that usually when you are a very uh, generous benefactor to such political, uh, such political interests, then they give you something, a token. So an ambassadorship that gives you the ability to travel in areas that are normally embargoed, and therefore you would not, as an ordinary so-called citizen, be able to travel there, 
by presidential uh, decree, you're given the permission to go there. So he should have gone there to deal with, and you have to remember that Obama is not a Democrat, he's not a Republican, he's a socialist. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So as uh -huh. such, you have to know uh -huh. there that that situation over there in Cuba could have uh, certain ramifications about his own private um, deals, or, as you said, it could have been his way of dealing with not just Ashada Sakura, but also other political uh, refugees that uh, has found asylum in Cuba. Now, remember, Cuba is a good jump-off point, and there they found uh, an underground civilization just off the coast of Cuba. I'm talking pyramids, gold, the whole nine yards, as well as oil. And you remember also that it could be a jump-off point strategically to get back control of the South American half of the Americans, that area where Venezuela and Argentina and these areas, and the fact that they just inaugurated a CIA pope, this pope, that the new pope is a pope who was, a, who was once the cardinal for Argentina, and he was responsible for the death of over 50,000 people while he was on his watch. He is a CIA uh, pope, so now sure. that his story is all down around there, know that this little trick to Cuba was not just them coming to visit. What the hell would they go down there to do in Cuba unless they were there? They were sent there on a mission. Mm -hmm. It's heavy. It's heavy. Brother Thank Darius, you. thanks as always. I, I, I'm going to reach out to you. I got some things I want to talk to you about. Uh, good to have you join me over here back in the uh, Blog Talk universe. Uh, Dr. Valentine, let me ask you this. Do you think in your observation, because there's so much chaos going on and some of it's by design some of it's as just as the cards fall but do you think that there's going to be a world war three or are we already in the midst of a world war three well we're watching the initial campaigns but there are counter forces that are definitely uh aligning to uh intercede um we see that at this point no more governments are solvent uh, something called the One People's Public Trust, which has traded over to another name I don't have at the moment. But with the filing of the One People's Public Trust into the UCC, it has effectively foreclosed on all governments that are based in corporations. In other words, there are corporations around the world disguising themselves as governments mm. and calling themselves countries. With the filing of the OPPT into the UCC, it has effectively foreclosed all of those governments. But the problem is the people don't know that they're dealing with a foreclosed and dysfunctional um, system. And, they, and because the people are keeping the, the illusion going, those in charge are now using that uh, ignorance as a means for them to retool to be able to combat the new freedom that's about to be given to the people. So. Now that more people are becoming a lot more intelligent about what's really happening in government, and it's very difficult to keep that information from them anymore, and of course they're disinformation agents uh, like uh, Alex, you know, Alex and what's his name? Um, Alex Jones. Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. He gives you a little bit of information, but mm -hmm. he never tells That's you right. he's really That's right. And there's a lot of things that are going on right now that we have to look at, but the main thing is the public versus the private, and that, that all corporations, including the United States, Federal Reserve, uh, IMF, World Bank, uh, the Bank of International Settlements, the IS, all of them have been foreclosed. And there's no functioning uh, order to the old order anymore. It's the people's ignorance and that energy that is generated from their ignorance by their participation in those defunct corporations that's keeping the situation alive. But there are ways now for you to be able to deal with that. And of course, uh, I'm not going to get into that because that's something that's a little too delicate. There are other people oh, yeah. that have oh, yeah. that information that you can go ahead and seek and, and get that from them. And then some things, and I, and I have to remind, I talk to a lot of people on this internet radio thing because a lot of people are so excited to, to just have a voice and it's very important. It plays a role for the moment until whoever the day is decides that it's overflow. But I, I still say that some things we just shouldn't be talking about in public. Period. That's right. I just, That's you right. know, I mean, you, you know, you, I tell, I, 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 I've, I've, I'm a student. I remember 
when someone would come in a room and we'd be sitting there and they knew that there was somebody that was an agent or whatever in the room and they knew it. Sometimes they would call them out. But the bottom line was, hey, look, if you want to deal with this, then we'll deal with it at another time. And I I think a lot of times in this mass media, social media thing, people forget that they're always listening, looking, watching. It it doesn't stop, you know, Uh, which gets to my last question. We're getting to the point. We actually have gone over a little. If you can stay a few more minutes, I got a couple of people. Looks like I got a couple of other callers, but it's up to you. I know you got a lot on your plate. I have a um, yeah. I have an appointment. Uh, what time you got? Um, it I could only go until about nine fifteen. It's nine oh seven now, according to my clock. Okay. But I can go for about nine fifteen, and then this I have to fine. go have another appointment nine thirty. This, this is fine. The last question of mm-hmm. this session, I want to thank you again on behalf of myself and a lot of people who you've inspired, you've touched, you you uh, you, you were talking about seeds earlier. Some of the seeds you planted in in me. 20 years ago, I'm doing everything I can to now take those seeds. I saved those seeds, and I'm planting them in some of the minds of some of my listenership. So I want to thank you again there, Brother Valentine. Um, You and your wife are doing a lot of work because I'm I'm one person. What are are you doing? What what does your current future look like, your current future in the eternal now? And I know you and Dr. Nalani, I've had you both as guests in the past, and we're still going to do some things with you. Finally worked out some of the kinks. What is it that you want the people to know that you guys are doing now that you want to share with them as you leave us to this evening to follow up with you on if they can't see you in New York next month or whatever? Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I I can tell you that we do want people to get uh, immediately conscious of their health. I have a lot of people that believe that because I promote something called Juice Plus, and that white folks make it, that somehow there's uh, something attached, an agenda attached. But I would we need to this. stop that. No, That's so yeah. juvenile, yeah. man. Uh, yeah. Well, the way I look at it is most black people didn't know it existed because most of their, matter of fact, 99% of their clientele were white before we even, you know, introduced that. So essentially, because whites have the access to resources that we don't, we have to see what we can do in this survival mode in order for us to get the best. So I have been approached by many people in order to to sell products, and I have tested them all on myself. And if they do not stand the gold standard tests, I do not allow that into the consciousness of my people. I did Juice Plus because my wife recommended it to me because I am what is known as a hygienic scientist. And hygiene, natural hygiene, is the most uh, sublime and superior form of natural healing as far as the science of natural healing above all other naturopathic sciences. So there has to be a specific criteria in this product that would match all that natural hygiene is represents. So when I found out that, that the person who put together the formula was a natural hygienist himself, that made me look at the product a second time. And so he was one of my teachers. His name was Umbat Santillo. And uh, he was also one of the teachers of a very close friend of mine in the community, John Harris, uh, back in New York. And he was an icon in the natural healing community as well. Uh, He's gone to the ancestors too. But here's the other thing. Uh, This Juice Plus essentially is nothing but fruits and vegetables. And when I found out how they made it, the, the process, and what the fastidious and very, very, um, very, very uh, efficient way that they have just taken natural fruits and vegetables and without destroying it, taken what it carries, those fruits and vegetables carry and berries carry at their highest and supreme level and made it affordable and available. That's the two things I wanted to make them know, affordable and available. And what we have done is shown people that since they don't get their fruits and vegetables, they can get 15 fruits and vegetables, or if they get the third one, 25 fruits, vegetables, and berries. Where have you ever heard of brothers and sisters, including me, get 25 fruits and vegetables per day? You don't. So I just recommend, above and beyond uh, our school, 
which is where we teach the uh, metaphysics and we teach naturopathic health and we teach the medical nature, that they seriously consider, do their own research. This is what I ask all of the people who listen to what I say, just listen to me, but don't do what I say just because I said it. Right. Do your own due diligence right. and do your own research. And everyone knows that I have been a proponent from that from the sense, the very beginning, that you do your own research that I've done, do it for yourself. But the Juice Plus has been a superior product and it has helped me and my wife, Dr. Nalani, to be able to give people the benefit of nutrition that they don't have. And this is the last thing I'll close out with is that most people who are vegans, they say, well, I don't need fruits and vegetables because I get my juice every day and so forth. But I tell them that are they vine-ripened fruits and vegetables? Even though they're organic, are they vine-ripened? Nine times out of ten, or at least five times out of ten, you can go to some of the best stores, Whole Foods or any other market that gives you those fresh fruits and vegetables. Even though they're organic, they're picked early. And yes. if they're picked early, then what happens in the picking of the early not, is something like 75% to 80% of the nutrients are actually given to the fruit and to the vegetables at the point of ripening, not before. So when you're getting uh, organic vegetables and they're picking it too soon to, so that they have a shelf life before you can buy it, you're not getting the it's essential nutrients that would have been given had it been vine ripened. But Juice Plus is nothing but vine ripened fruits and vegetables. It's not only that, it is non-pesticide uh, as well as non-genetically modified. So it has all of these ingredients. I've tested it. There are over 31 tests, 31 medical tests that they can go and check for themselves, and it has been gold standard. At least 25 of them have been gold standard testing without the company knowing it. The company didn't requisition these tests. They were just tested, and they came back with flying colors. So when I saw that, all the other beds, I'm not putting anything down like Noni and the rest of these. Right. If they do not have the scientific research that shows that the product matches, in other words, product-specific, this is that's the very important. When somebody gives you something and they say it's in this bottle, it's made from this fruit, the trick is they tell you what was in the fruit and they give you what the fruit contains, but they do not tell you what the product contains. Because in the change from the fruit to the product, they go through pasteurization, they go through all these things, and what's in the fruit does not exist in the bottle. So mm. what they're saying is that in testing, Juice Plus is product-specific, which means you get what you get from fruits and vegetables in that capsule, and that's the secret. So we open it because they try to give uh, the one thing that they use is the gelatin capsule from um, from the uh, kosher cows and the halal cows. But what happens is we open it up and put it directly into our fruit, into our juices, and into water. They tried to make the vegetable caps, but the enzymes in the product were so powerful, they ate right through it. And every time people would put their hands in to get the capsules, it would break up. So they went back to doing the, uh, the, uh, the, ge the gelatin capsules temporarily until they develop a more, a more stable vegetable cap. But just to let you know, I've done the research. It took me a year and at least four months to research this and to test it on myself. So if you're interested in getting some support for good eating and for your, your children, and if you have a child four years of age or over, and you wish them to get Juice Plus for free for up to four years, or if you have a child that's in college full-time, you can call me at 1-800-847-1291. Again, 1-800-847-1291. Leave your information, and I'll get back to you. And you okay. can also call that number if you're interested in joining us for our universities' courses during that time, or for consultations, because we do health consultations, we do marriage consultations, and I personally do metaphysical consultations for people who wish to ask me questions along those lines. Yes. Dr. Phil, do you have a website? Yes, our website is, uh, this is the, short, the shortcut, it's UKS, 
N O W dot R G. That's U is in United, K is in King, S is in Science, N O W dot O R G. That's the University of Commission Sciences dot org. Uh, now that org, um, okay. and that will give you that will give you uh, a, a kind of a link to my book, The Wounded Womb, as well, a link to my my Queen's book, Dr. Nalani, and a link to other books that we recommend to our students in the store. And uh, if you wish to go to uh, the rest of the site, just click the courses button and you'll get a breakdown of what, our, what we have to offer. Well, thank you so much for coming in and joining us today, man. I, 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 and once again, you're, you're, you always got a home here. Uh, I haven't, you know, we talked offline about doing some things with you and Dr. Nalani, and I had to put some things together. I think, think we're on the right track. I'll follow up. And uh, we'll try to get you back between now and the event in New York. But if we don't, once again, uh, thank you. They'll be glad to have you come back. And um, the Light 08 experience is that much better for your presence. <laughs> Give thanks, beloved, and thank you for your kind invitation. And, yes, let's do this uh, before the event in New York again. Uh, call me offline and uh, let's set that up. Okay. Well, family, those of you who didn't get a chance to talk to Dr. Valentine, sorry, we, we, we could go on and on because it's never enough with uh, our teachers. And uh, so you've heard the information. Uh, be sure and check out uh, if you're in the New York area. He will be there next month. There will be, I'll have posts on my uh, Facebook, uh, Dr. Phil Valentine's Facebook page. Uh, this will be Dick Gregory and Brother Polite on the 19th, this 19th coming up, this weekend coming up at the Akbar Hall. That's 1174 Bedford Avenue, Putnam and Madison, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, doors open at 3 p.m. It's going to be powerful. you got Dick Gregory and Brother Polite, and, and that, as far as I'm concerned, represents uh, Dick Gregory's always told us we got to make money, we got to get paid. So it's not just infotainment. And Brother Polite is is one of the new jacks, one of the new breeds. Is, uh, one of the brothers is out there uh, showing the people how to get theirs, and he's conscious as well. So uh, be sure and check him out uh, if you're so inclined. The number for information: three four seven four nine six ten twenty two. Three four seven four nine six ten twenty two, or three four seven six hundred seven zero six six. For those of you, you know that um, my new book, Supernova Consciousness, is just about ready for you guys. So you can hit me on the inbox, light08radio at gmail.com. You can hit me up on Facebook, light08radio page. Uh, if you have not got Light Body yet, please get it. Uh, we, the reports that I have back, people really like what they read, what they've heard, if they got the audio book. We're actually making a visual out of the story the people spoke. And uh, Man Who's Out of Sight will be something visual for you to experience probably later on this year. I'm doing a, a full animation of that particular story for those of you who read it. And if you haven't read it, get the book so you can see what the hoopla is about. I want to thank uh, my guest, Reverend Dr. Phil Valentine, his lovely wife, Dr. Nalani, for sharing him with us. I want to thank uh, Brother, Sim Brother King Simon in New York for uh, being there and, and, and making doing everything he can to make to give our people mind, food, nourishment in the form of speakers and, and teachers and scholars and people who, who love their people, make a great sacrifice. I want to thank those of you who have continued to support us here on the Light of Weight Radio Experience, online, offline. Big shout-outs to Sister Carolyn Bay, uh, Sister Jean Morgan, Brother Frank Kwame over in UK. He's actually in Africa right now. Sister Desta there in New Jersey. Um, uh, Brother Darius, who is another one of our regular listeners that listen to me and Dr. Blair on Expanding Consciousness, and thanks to Dr. Blair as well. Uh, and most of all, thanks to you. Uh, this is why I do what I do, and I just want to thank you again for being part of my experience. And as long as you are listening, I will continue to talk and bring people that have something to say that you want to hear. Uh, so on that note, you know what I always say, be the blessing, circulate the love. Remember that we are all we have, we are all we need, and you are just another eye to the next person. So remember that. Love is the answer. It's not weak. It makes you strong. Tony Quaid, Light 08, as I'm known in some circles, and we will do this again uh, next week if everything works the way it's been working. <laughs> so take care, family, and uh, Creator bless us all.